Welcome to the 2022 semifinal match between Jim and myself. We are playing a single game, which will determine sides by using the bidding technique that we have posted in our Discord channel. Um, I won't go into too much detail about the bid, but essentially what you do is you set up the board, pick your units, and then each side bids uh, a number between zero and two usually for how many fewer starting missions you're willing to accept in order to play that side. So for the full bidding rules, go ahead and take a look at the pinned um, item in our Discord channel. Um, but here we go. So um, as we set up the units here, you'll see that the loyalties are pretty, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty fair setup. We've got a loyal Mon Cal, a loyal Kashyyyk, and a loyal Bothwi. And then we have subjugated Imperial units right next to it with a subjugated Corellia. Um, so that means we would pick a base setup. So you'll see here in a minute the loyalties lay out. And then we're, both Jim and I are going to have to determine whether or not we want to play Rebels or Imperial. Um, you can imagine what I pick. I would prefer to play Imperial. So I'm going to bid Imperial, but I'm going to say zero missions. Uh, meaning I'm willing to play Imperial, but I want to draw my two starting missions. Now, um, if you bid one, instead of starting with two starting missions, you would only start with one starting mission. Um, the second turn, you would actually draw three to bring up to your normal four, but you start one mission down on turn one. So let's see what happens. I bid zero. Jim also bid zero. In the event of a tie, what you do is you both roll a dice. Now, the winner of the dice roll um, then has a choice. They can increase their bid by one and play the side, or they can defer and give the opponent the choice of which side to play. Uh, I got lucky I rolled a two. Jim rolled a one. Uh, luck already going in my way. So I will increase the bid by one, and I will choose to play the Imperial side. So we're going to go ahead and set up here. I bet you can already imagine what this is going to look like. Uh, the main consideration here is where to put the Death Star. I can either put it in Seleust, I can put it in Megiddo, or maybe I put it in uh, Coruscant and then move my Star Destroyer to Seleust instead. Um, however, I try to go with a pretty conservative approach here, I think, and just stick it next to Naboo. Um, everything else is pretty standard deployment from there. That's going to give Jim some choices on what to do with his rebel units. So I have a vulnerable spot in my Guido. That's a, a loyal area that produces a yellow ATAT. Might be nice to start next to there. He could also put it in um, Nalhada, where I can't get to right away. Um, you know, maybe there's a consideration for Hoth or somewhere like that too. Um, he's going to start with fighters and speeders in the base and then stick his army with transport. Looks like he's considering Nalhada. And uh, he and I are both on Discord chatting right now as well. So you won't see too much typing in the bottom left hand corner. Um, he debates on putting a Y wing out there as well and then decides that it's going to be too expensive to put everything there, you know, to potentially get him trapped in and then run out of units. So instead, he'll go with uh, targeting my Guido early. Apologies for all the jerky camera movements here. I am uh, antsy to get going here. This game has been a long time coming. As you know, the tournaments lasted a whole lot longer than what I originally anticipated. So pretty conservative setup. My Guido is likely going to get blockaded. Um, I have to figure out what to do about Corellia here. So that will depend on what Jim decides to start with here. So as you can see, I got dealt my two starting missions, one of which was trade relations. 
and then um, the way the bid works, I agree to start with one less. So I put both those missions back, I shuffle the deck, and then draw Gerard's card on the top, which I will not be doing first turn. All right, Leia plays Desperate Hour, and Mothma and Leia are on a mission, which means we're going to have a loyal Utapau and two Moncals starting off. Next decision is whether or not to put Riken or Dodonna on a mission, and whether or not that's going to be a sabotage or an infiltrate or a build alliance. So he goes with Dodonna, which means it could be an infiltrate, could also be a uh, build alliance. If it's an infiltrate, I would expect he would open up on Corellia. So I'm going to put Palps on Rule by Fear. By putting Palpatine on Rule by Fear, I'm kind of threatening that I have trade relations. So in theory, if he does not open with Leia and Mothma, I could trade relations Utapau and reduce the Mon Cal by one. Um, also, if he does decide to infiltrate on Corellia, I can um, still likely win that with a rule by fear, so we'll see. He decides to take the conservative approach and do establish trade relations in Utapau. Um, since the Emperor is back, he couldn't block it even if he wanted to, which I wouldn't try that anyway. And we'll get a Mon Cal and a Nebulon on the course. Uh, gonna go ahead and grab loyalty in Corellia now. Now he's got to decide whether to block it with Riken and roll 3v1 or take the sure thing and blockade Magito, which is what he's gonna go ahead and do. Just a reminder, um, always shuffle your cards in the beginning. Go ahead and shuffle Jim's here. Jim usually plays on the ultimate mod, um, which does a lot of things kind of automatically for you, so... You'll see a couple of times here where we're messing around with the UI a little bit. All right, I block hits, but he cancels with the transport card. Um, he's got to decide how many units to move back and whether or not to put them to Ord or to Dathomir. If he puts them in Ord, it means he's probably got the um, start five in, in Alderaan, but um, looks like he's going to Dathomir and leaving three behind for the blockade. And two damage. I've got nothing. All right, so no AT8, no, no double AT-AT -AT build for me on turn one. Now I just got to go about my business. Tarkin going to Bothwee. And covering up with uh, just taking two stormtroopers with me. I've got to have that Star Destroyer available to go to Geonosis probably, or maybe Naboo, so I can get to Utapau. Doesn't necessarily have to move this turn, but definitely by next turn. All right, and then we debate over a little bit on whether or not I want to block his loyalty gain in Nalhada. That move is okay. Um, I can't easily you know i'd have to make a decision to block and it's kind of a low value system also might be building up for support of the huts but pretty much anywhere else he would put i'd have an option to uh, subjugate it so rather than go to ord i elect to go to kashik to get that blocked off um, i don't know if that's the right move or not i don't like nalhada and kashik both being available i'm going to miss that assault carrier um, but it also lets me get out of Kashyyyk before he likely draws a uh, Wookiee Uprising. I don't want to lose any more Star Destroyers than I have to this game, with two Mon Cal's being on the board. All right, Tatooine Geonosis. Um, uh, it's nice drawn Tatooine. And then here I draw my two cards, and I drew Tarkin's card and Trade Relations. And um, so then I'll draw my third card, which again, when you bid one... You're saying how many missions you will uh, be okay being without on the first turn, but you do draw back up to full your second turn. Uh, two would mean you'll take no starting missions, but you'll draw them both, all four, on the second turn. Three would mean you take no starting missions and you only draw um, one replacement card on the third turn, so you'd only draw three instead of four. 
All right, anyway, you can see the bid uh, in theory prevented me from having turn one trade relations, so it definitely did have some sort of impact here. Um, for heroes, I took Piet, uh, Jim took Akbar, and I had an interesting choice with Piet. I had uh, Ready for Action, or I had the No Retreat card. Both of Piet's cards are really good. Um, there are times where I'll take both of them if available. Um, in this, early on in the game, it's hard to know which one's going to be the better one to take. So I go ahead and pick Ready for Action, and let's keep that in the back of our heads for later and see if we made the right decision there or not. All right, the other piece um, that we have going on here for those keen eyes of you guys is uh, you'll see Jim swapped an X-Wing for a Y-Wing after we built, which I said was fine as long as I can swap an AT-AT for a Shield Bunker, and he agreed. So Shield Bunker and Bothui to try to absorb that, um, that hit from the incoming Y-Wing is my thought process there. Akbar is his hero. So I have Piet, he's got Akbar, and now we're off to assignment phase. So with Akbar and Leia back, means he's likely going to attack out with that Y-Wing, but maybe not. Maybe he just wants to blow up my assault carrier if I get to it. Um, the fact that there's a loyalty there, the fact that there's a, a Y-Wing there, I sort of feel like there's some possibility the base might be up north or perhaps in Ryloth and maybe he's just trying to pick off that assault carrier. <laughs> All right, now I gotta decide which of my cool diplomacy missions to do. I'm gonna go ahead and do a rule by fear and I'm also gonna do Tarkin's mission. The reason I'm doing both is because Leia's back to block and even though Tarkin gets plus two, Leia still has a reasonable chance to block that even if I try to pair it up with Vader or the Emperor or something. So, all right, we got Akbar coming out to take out the Y-Wing. Now, I do have the shield bunker there, so I have a reasonable chance of surviving this. Um, I'm not gonna play a leader. And then he is gonna go ahead and play It's a Trap. So he really wants that shield bunker dead. Now, for some reason, I don't know what's going on here. I don't play the shield bunker card, but I feel like I can play a different card instead. So we'll keep an eye on this move here too. It doesn't end up making anything terribly different. Um, again, I shouldn't have played reinforcements there. Uh, he takes out the assault carrier. I take out the Y-wing with three black hits. So the extra black hit didn't do anything. And uh, I do have an extra TIE Fighter on the board, and I do have one less combat card. So that was definitely an oversight from both of us there. All right, uh, now I gotta go about business here. I either gotta build loyalty somewhere or uh, move some troops around. So we'll go ahead and move Piet to Ord. Uh, thought process for going to Ord, I wanna get the um, you know, the assault carrier build threatened at least, and I also want to take out those rebels sitting in my Guido. So I'll move the armor over to Ord with Piet. Moving with Piet helps me hedge against a sabotage. Also keeps Vader free to block or to do a more important move down the road. Um, I haven't moved the Star Destroyer out of Kashyyyk because he didn't draw uh, Chewbacca. If he did and Chewie was on a mission, I uh, well, then that would just be my fate. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do a, um, Dodonna's gonna infiltrate, and we'll fast forward past that. We'll let that happen. Tag over to Geonosis. Keep in mind, I did not go to Ord last turn, so I don't have an assault carrier coming up on the queue. I'm thinking about that mistake now because I would love to move Tag to Geo and then deploy an assault carrier there and have that assault carrier go check Ryloth. Um, but instead I opted to block a uh, double rebel build. So we'll see how that goes. And we've got a Riken coming up next with a Sabotage. Sabotage on probably Seleucami or the Death Star. Oh, nope, up in Bothwee, that seems fine too. 
He's going to opt to stop the production instead of get rid of the shield bunker. I think that's a good move. I'm not playing with the rote deck, so I don't have Imperial Might. Now Leia's back, and I don't want her blocking Tarkin. So I'm going to go ahead and try to pull her out with a Rule by Fear. So I'll do Rule by Fear. I'll put it in Ord, because that is a blockable mission. So what I'm hoping is, is that Leia comes out and rolls 3v2 here. I don't care too much about the results, but I want to get her out of there so that I can play Tarkin maybe where Tag is to flip Ryloth to Loyal. Um, I rolled a 2 on Ord, and then forgot to roll my third dice, and then Leia rolls a 2 and blocks it. Okay, so no loyalty in Ord, that's okay. Um, now I can move Vader. So I either am going to move up to Toydaria with that Star Destroyer and then drop Tarkin on there, or I'm debating on moving the Death Star to Mustafar and then um, gaining loyalty there as well, or to Bespin and then stripping the Mustafar loyalty. So I got a couple of options with Tar Tarkin's card here. I just need to just need to figure out which one to do. I think there's pros and cons to all of them. Um, it's not a build round, so I don't need to subjugate Mustafar right now. Um, I also have a trade relations that I can use next round as well. So I'm going to go ahead and be, again, I think a little too conservative here, but I really don't like not having any transport up in Nalhada. I feel like the base could be in Kessel or in Nalhada. So I'm going to go ahead and move Vader there and then stack Tarkin with Fear will keep them in line. That will remove the Nalhada loyalty, so I don't need to worry about that next turn. And it will also allow me to check Kessel. And then I have a tank on the queue that I can deploy in Kessel to lock it up. Um, the other consideration is to do it in Geonosis and then get loyalty in Geonosis and Ryloth. Um, if I don't do that, then it's going to be hard to come back to Ryloth later. And Ryloth is also a likely place to be. Third option is the Death Star, and then take Naboo and Utapau, but I feel like that's the worst of the three options on there. I guess the worst option would be in, the, in Ord, but that's not really an option here. So I'm going to choose Toydaria. I'm going to get Kessel. I'm going to unloyal uh, Nalhutta, and then if I feel the need to, I can always check Nalhutta with that Star Destroyer and Toydaria. Um, which might eventually end up going to Ryloth, too. I could go Nalhutta, Bothui, Tatooine, and Ryloth. Uh, drew Kessel. That's too bad. Also drew Naboo. Um, so a little bit of a waste of Tarkin's card there, but that's okay. All right. Um, you'll see my draws have been crazy this game. We've had Fear Will Keep Them in Line and two trade relations so far. Um, and Ozzel now is a hero. So Ozzel or Gerard, that's an easy pick. When I was uh, starting off in this game, one of the first games I, I filmed um, before I really knew too much about Rebellion earlier this year, last year, um, somebody made the comment, I think I was watching a game that Temerity was playing, and he made a comment about how Ozzel is always a sad thing to see if you're a rebel player, and I had no idea why. I didn't really understand how powerful Catch Them by Surprise is. Um, but it almost always plays a critical role. It's almost like playing the assault for the for the Empire. And just super powerful card. We'll see if it comes into play in this game. Alright, so let's take a look at that probe map. Bottom left sector, bottom right sector, top left sector. This map's a mess right now. Ryloth open, Malastare open, Alderaan open. Everything, uh, everything's available. I did uh, grab the Kessel probe after I spent a mission to check Kessel, so yep, full of bad life decisions so far. All right, Leia back to block. Chirrut has come out to play. Um, that's a two-fist hero, so we got to start thinking about hit and runs here. Um, if you haven't noticed, which you probably haven't yet, uh, Jim's playing the base deck, obviously. All right. 
So what to do here? I've got a trade relations. I, I have to go to Utapau. I have to do something with Malastare. So that's going to be two heroes. Malastare I could deal with with trade relations. Utapau I have to subjugate because I need that assault carrier build. Um, those are really the only two half twos. So I'm going to go ahead and put Vader on another trade relation and get them both out. Now this is a build turn and he's likely got a sabotage queued up. So I have to put somebody with tactics value out there. It doesn't necessarily need to be on R&D. So I debate for a little bit on whether I want tag on draw them out or R&D. Um, I feel like Tarkin's the usual choice or Ozl for R&D. So I put tag on R&D to maybe try to bait out, a, make him think I'm doing a capture. Um, and if so, maybe he sabotages Corellia, and then I just get a, a to remove it and get a draw. All right, Chirut's flying X-Wings to do Rogue Squadron Raid. Um, since Vader's on a mission, I can't block that. I lose one Star Destroyer to Rebel Missions. And go ahead and subjugate Utapau. Now we'll have to see if the sabotage comes out on Geonosis or not. If a sabotage comes out on Geonosis, I feel like that Star Destroyer is coming right back to Ryloth. Got an infiltrate, we'll go ahead and do that. And Tarkin's off to do battle in Megiddo. Gonna free up this ATAT -AT for a build here. Bombard is the card to play. He's gonna block hits. Then we'll run this at double speed here for a little bit. No uh, no blocked hits, lots of heals. All right, and Jim rolled a heal, but after some discussion, he decides not to heal the one damaged unit. You have to use the heal if you draw it, but he healed the guy that was double damaged, um, so that prevents anything from having a second round of combat. And here is the sabotage, but he puts it on the subjugated area. Uh, that makes sense because, you know, if he thinks tags on R&D and you spend that in um, Corellia, you're going to regret it. So, Emperor is now off to Trade Relations Cato. Why Cato? Because if I move the Death Star to Mustafar, um, I can't then subjugate Cato. So i got to try it. I rolled three. Leia rolled a blank. So I actually got Cato, which is nice. I didn't anticipate that happening. Akbar goes to do a rapid, and now Vader is free to do his trade relations without getting blocked. So I'm going to kind of pass the ball back to Mothma because I want to see where she's going to build alliance. She could get a freebie in basically Mandalore, I think, is the only free spot at the moment. Um, Bespin is a spot to consider as well because then I have to pick which place to go to. However, what he doesn't know is that I'm on a second trade negotiations. So I will trade negotiations Mustafar and I will move Ozel to Bespin to subjugate. So this is a nice end of round three. I always like to try to minimize rebel production on turn four. Oftentimes there's not a lot you can do on turn, you know, the end of turn one going into turn two, but going into turn four, you certainly can. Um, so the rebels are only building their two base troops this turn, their troop and their, their fighter. Uh, Akbar uses rapid to go back to the base. That's kind of an interesting move. So that combined with no sabotage in Geonosis makes me think maybe not Ryloth. So it could be Dantooine. Oh. Uh, could be, oh, there's the Nell Hutta card, and Dagobah. So we're kind of down to Yavin, Dantooine, Ilum, Endor, Hoth, um, Ryloth, maybe Malastare. Got a choice between Jabba and Janus, and as you can see, I pulled another Imperial Diplomacy card up. I promise I'm not cheating. Um, that's insane. Pulled Propaganda out. Um, general rule of thumb, if you have propaganda in your hand, uh, Janus is worth it. Otherwise, I think I pick Jabba in that situation. Jabba's mission card, on the other hand, is terrible, and I almost never use make an example. 
All right, starting to get some decent plastic on the board. I am missing that Star Destroyer that I worked hard to build the first turn, thanks to Chirrut. So I would normally be deploying that in probably Bespin right now, but instead I've got a Shield Bunker and a Striker. Since uh, the base could be an Endor Hoth, um, seems like you know getting Starfighters and a Shield Bunker up there is nice. I can wait another turn for an Assault Carrier to come out, so I can put some pressure and check without having to wander the Death Star into a Nebulon stocked with fighters. Alright, we got Dodonna back and Riken back. So Dodonna back means probably no plan the Assault. Um, seems okay. And then I've got to figure out what to play on my end here. So what to do, what to do. I think I need to build Alliance. I probably don't need to play Janice's, um, Janice's card here. But with Dodonna back, Leia on a mission. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting turn, I feel like. Secret weapon research, not too much to do with that. I could draw out Dodonna, but if he's planning an attack, he m most likely would... Well, maybe he opens with trying to kill the shield bunker. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Um, one thing I do know is he picked Jin as a hero, um, which is an unusual pick, unless you need a three intel hero, which he does. So Jin is most likely on covert operations. However, I don't have Yularen to block. If I did, I probably would block that when it comes out. Instead, he's going to get to add an objective to his hand. And right now he only has one level two. So he might be fishing for the Death Star plans. That's a possibility. Although I feel like if you're fishing for the Death Star plans, you'd probably have Dodonna on. Well, maybe not. Maybe you keep Dodonna back. Anyway, we're going to run Janus. We're going to run Interdictor. And we're going to run Roll by Fear. And here comes Jin with Covert Operations. I don't have a, a hero that can block that, and if I did, I'd be pinning the Death Star in place. So we're going to go ahead and let that happen. Now I have some things I need to do here. Well, actually, I don't have too much to do. I need to kind of let the Rebels do their thing before I overcommit to moving my, my stuff around. I no longer need to check Nalhutta. So that Star Destroyer probably needs to go, that's in Toydaria, probably needs to go either left or right, and I probably got to commit that so it doesn't just sit up north. Um, the Star Destroyer in my Guido could go on a remote ex exploration, could go Dantooine, Dathomir, Yavin, could also go Mandalore, and then Yavin and backwards. Instead, I'm just going to go ahead and, and take Tarkin and check... Malastare. Um, if the base is in Malastare, then I can start to collapse on that, but it is not. Again, I feel like because there was no sabotage in Geonosis, that maybe there's not a high chance of the base being in Ryloth. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably keep that Star Destroyer open in Utapau until I can commit to one spot or the other. Okay, this is interesting. Now we've got Lead the Strike Team right after covert operations on where my shield bunker is. Now, I have Vader available to block, um, but why not use Vader to block? I consider it for a while, and I also consider bringing him into the battle, but I feel like this is a battle he can win if he commits enough troops there. So if I block that, um, it's going to be a two versus uh, two and a little one. I think Jen's got a minor fist. And then if he's got a sabotage queued up with Riken, then that becomes 3.1 versus 3, and I feel like one of those two will go through. 
And then if he is planning on attacking the Death Star at a Hoth with Dodonna or Endor with Dodonna, or I guess he could be on Mustafar too, then it's already kind of too late. So I decide not to block lead the strike team. I have a decent army here, including a striker. So Chirut's going to play his card, and he's going to have to decide whether or not to kill an ATST or to kill that striker, because the striker can play the cancel card. So I have a choice. I can either cancel. He's got a Vanguard there, so he's probably either doing Tow Cables or the Vanguard's card. Either one would be okay to cancel, but I can also just move the damage to the Shield Bunker. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Shield Bunker card. Um, if he does decide to do tow cables, I'm going to bank. He's thinking I'm going to cancel, so he's going to play the, the Vanguard card. And then with the Vanguard card, I can move both damage to the Shield Bunker, and the ATST will still be alive as long as he doesn't roll a ton of, ton of hits here. Um, so Jim decides to put everything on the ATST. And then the next card I can play, I can cancel the... Um, the tow cables as long as things live here so we'll see i'll need a little bit of luck but that's the name of the game right okay good luck so far one hit then he's got two re-rolls he's got to roll yep, two more hits okay so he's got four on the ats he's got five on the atst so i can take no, he's got four on the ATST. So I can take three of those, or nope, he's got five. So I can take three off, put three on the shield bunker, uh, queue that up to get destroyed, and then try to roll to heal the ATST, which I think is going to be my best shot. If I can heal the ATST and maybe get a couple of crits um, or a crit and a black hit, I can whittle down their forces a little bit. Maybe have a chance next turn, but instead I roll three blanks. The bunker's dead, the ATST's dead. I now just have a tank, so I'm gonna throw out a damage, but he's gonna blow up my tank, so no more. No more tank, didn't kill a single unit there. I have a Death Star floating over a Rebel Loyal Bespin, and I don't like that, so I gotta move that. And Liberation got scored, okay? and something to fight for gets played, so he can take Liberation back in his hand. Okay, that was a really good strike team that I probably should have blocked. Um, now I definitely have to move the Death Star. I could move it back to Celeste, but instead I'm gonna move it to Mustafar with the idea of building loyalty with the Emperor underneath it, and then maybe doubling down and removing Bespin loyalty with Janus too. Okay, leave a TIE Fighter behind though to blockade. see if Dodonna comes out of Hoth now. We know he's not in Dagobah because of the probe. And interesting. Okay, it's a sabotage. So he doesn't need that to take out the shield bunker anymore, so he can just sabotage Ord and potentially block. I do decide to try to block with Piet. I want that um, assault carrier if possible. So I'll roll one, and Rick and we'll roll zero, so the sabotage is blocked. Um, I don't know about that. I don't know about that move. But I do feel like I've narrowed down the base to the bottom right section, um, which we're going to find out if it's Hoth here or not here in a minute. Um, so I felt like I could spare Piet. I didn't have too much else to do. And Leia is running Plan the Assault. Now that's an unfortunate chain of events for me. I built an interdictor when I should have dropped uh, Emperor on top of Mustafar to build loyalty there and also potentially block um, playing the assault by Leia. Who knew? Okay, we've got five fighters, the Nebulon and the transport. Um, I've got Vader out here, so we're going to be facing the Nebulon card likely first. 
um, and you know when in doubt just super laser something so we're going to super laser the nebulon because if we roll crits we're, we're going to look for crits with reds and we're going to try to distribute the damage on the fighters so let's just laser that nebulon while we got it oh maybe i'm changing my mind i don't know why i would be i guess we'll see daughter and father having a battle over over mustafar to blow up his death star god rebels are so rude sometimes all right he's going to remove two damage with the nebulon card and you know we got a couple of strategies here he's got three x-wings right so if you do damage you can either stack it on ships to prevent he so if you stack three on an x-wing he can't heal an x-wing right um so you can either go for ooh, that's gross four hits um and then an extra which he decides to put on a tie fighter here so we'll see how I roll, and then we'll talk about the results here. So the Nebulon's toast, so I just need black hits and crits. And I roll really well. Five hits, plus a red. Now the correct thing to do here is to put one on each. He can save two of his, um, he can save two of his ships of his choice, which would be two X-Wings if we do it that way. Um, but I would kill two Y-Wings and an X-Wing. Instead, what I look at doing is spreading the damage out a little bit. I put three on one X-Wing to ensure the X-Wing's dead, and then two on two other X-Wings. So he can heal those two X-Wings there, and I only kill one ship. Now, I should have just put two... I don't know what I was doing there. If I had put one on everything, he could have healed two X-Wings, but the X-Wing and two Y-Wings would be dead, and he would just be left with two X-Wings. But made a, played a little bit too quick there. If you look in the bottom left corner, Chalky actually sees what I did and then has to stop talking because he doesn't want to point out that I'm an idiot while we're uh, actively playing. But so be it. Um, Death Star plans for Leia. It's got to roll a crit. Let's see what happens here. And uh, it's a 50-50 chance to roll a crit. No one in a million, she's not her brother. And no crit, no crit, no crit. Leia decides to hightail it out of there. All right, so hightailing it out of there. She's got another Nebulon on Q coming out here. But Nebulon's card's already been played, and she still has the transport for a follow-up run on the Death Star again. Now, she could have stayed. She could have stayed. But I would have um, the TIE Fighter card to do a damage. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe stay and try again. Maybe not. Anyway, Emperor comes running out to um, build loyalty on Mustafar. So yeah, take away from that last Nebulon fight, don't get fancy. Just spread the damage, let the Rebels heal what they want to heal. There would only be two X-Wings in Hoth right now instead of two X-Wings and two Y-Wings. Makes a difference when you only need a either Gold Leader or Red Leader to drop a torpedo down the hatch. All right, and now we've got a Corvette attacking out of the base into Bespin with the goal of freeing up Bespin from that one TIE fighter. So now for sure we know that there are um, rebels either in Hoth or in Endor, but I don't know which one. I'm assuming probably Endor, but hard to know. All right, uh, rebels cancel. And then um, roll to wipe the TIE Fighter here. Two hits. One heal. Not enough. Corvette has liberated Bespin. And now I have a basically naked TIE Fighter next, or naked Death Star next to a bunch of Rebel spaceships. Yep, that's a thing. All right, we've got a transport. Possibly in Hoth, possibly in Endor. We've got a Corvette, we've got four Starfighters, and I have on cue 
I've got an interdictor, which is nice, and um, I've got Ozzel, and then I wipe the Bespin loyalty with Janus. The problem is, is because I'm behind schedule here, Build Alliance is still available, so he's going to go ahead and build the, the, the loyalty back, but I still feel like that was probably an okay use of Janus's card there. Then Akbar is on a Rapid. Now, on this upcoming Rapid, the game time that passes is pretty long. Uh, Jim thinks for quite a while on whether or not he wants to move the base or not. Um, I skip through that wait. He decides not to move the base and stay in put. So at the moment, I don't know if the base is on Endor or Hoth. I do know it's not Mustafar because we ruled that by fear. And we had a... Uh, so we know it's not sitting directly underneath us. Oh. All right, let's see here. Or maybe he does move the base. It's been a while. Not sure I actually remember. Also, I want to go ahead and take a moment to thank everybody. If you check in the top right hand corner, we got a huge turnout for watching here. Um, there's been some good interest in this uh, in this tournament, and I, I appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing. You've probably noticed I got to 100 subscribers. That's pretty cool. Appreciate that. Um, Dantooine and Felucia for the probes. Those are pretty good probes. The base did not move, so I still have to figure out how to get there, and I don't actually have a laser either. Now, I drew a good card. I drew Hunt Them Down. Hunt Them Down might remedy my situation of leaving too many fighters alive in the first place, but again, I could just hunt down the remaining fighters on the board now, and then the Death Star would be pretty much impervious to everything. Drew Jabba's card, too. I also take Krennic here on Secret Facility. I don't know about that move. Um, I think Finest would have been a better selection, but Krennic is my homeboy, so I tend to take him even when I shouldn't. Um, now, with Secret Facility, I have a choice. I could take Dagobah and then retreat the Death Star to Dagobah and stick a shield bunker under it and flee. Or the other way of thinking about something like this is you pick a, a planet that you do not want the Rebels to get if they pull plant false leads. Now, I've moved everything away from the Ryloth sector for the most part. Um, I don't really want to move that Star Destroyer up there because if this Death Star dies, I'm going to need it down south. So I actually put Tatooine up under Secret Facility with the intention of not using it and just making sure that if the Rebels pull Plant False Leads, they can't then go to Tatooine. All right, you can see my deployment here. It's a little bit scattered. Um, why not put the interdictor on the de on the death star you know because i'm debating on what i want to do with the death star at this point um one option is i could just move everything with ozel to dagobah the interdictor the star destroyer the death star and then i can make a concerted push down south however that would leave open mustafar and bespin and you know, be kind of a mess. I could also move everything to Celeste and bring the dust or the Star Destroyer from um, Malastair in, or I could catch them by surprise and attack either Bespin or the fighters in Hoth. Now it's risky hitting the fighters in Hoth because, well, it's not that risky if I don't bring the Death Star. So I'm debating over what it is I should do here. Um, and I'm actually sort of wishing I had that Assault Carrier card right now, I think, too. But maybe the TIE Fighter card's just as good. I'm not sure. All right. So he's got everybody on missions. And with the base being either in Hoth or, or Endor, it means I really need that Death Star. And in order to get the Death Star, I need there to not be Rebel Fighters. And in order to not have Rebel Fighters, I need to blow up Rebel Fighters. So that is exactly what I'm going to do with Hazel here. I'm going to fly the Assault Carrier with the only escorts the Death Star has into Hoth. 
I'm going to roll three black dice and a red dice, and I'm going to try to score as many hits as possible. Now, I could either flip the combat here, or I could play the no heal card. I opt for flipping the combat because I'm expecting them to probably play the X-Wing card here, is my guess. Or I could play the TIE Fighter card and do a damage. But instead, I'll, I'll flip the combat. They'll block black hits. Okay, that's, that's a good move. They need those things alive. So I'm rolling black. Um, I roll on accident here. I rolled a crit, but it doesn't count because I shouldn't be rolling in the first place here. So let the rebels roll. They roll one, two hits, and two... Ooh, that's tough. Okay. A uh, crit, a red, and a black. So they take a TIE Fighter and the Assault Carrier out. Now I need crits. I got two crits. That's nice. Reroll both of the black. Get a heal. Heal my fighter. Nice. Do two hits. Take out both X-Wings. Okay, Cassian's there. He can retreat, but he has to retreat to Bespin. Okay, now if he retreats to Bespin, it means his first move cannot be to attack out with that one single X-Wing. Um, he could choose to let the two Y-Wings die and then attack out with a single X-Wing. And then I would be rolling four red dice plus um, re-rolls. Four red dice plus, uh, you know, three re-rolls if I drop Piet there or the Emperor to try to roll a single crit. So instead he decides to retreat to Bespin. Now I don't have another great follow-up attack to Bespin. There's three fighters that are there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Emperor on Rule by Fear. I'm gonna put Vader on Hunt Them Down. Hunt them down to potentially hunt down two of those starfighters. In theory, if I hunt down two of the three starfighters, I could move the Death Star and the Interdictor and the ground troops into um, Bespin. You'll notice I put Janus on Mustafar to deploy three uh, ground soldiers there as well, three stormtroopers. I like to stack action cards together when I play them because if it's going to put me behind schedule, I might as well be really behind schedule instead of just a little bit. So I debate on moving everything to Dagobah, and then I think to myself, you know, if I do that, I'm just letting that Bespin fleet get out of control here. So um, I missed another thing while I was talking to Leia also did prepare for battle, which means she just got all those useful cards back. Um, I decided not to block it because if I did, it was going to pin my fleet down. So I opted not to do that. Instead, I move Tag up to Ryloth. I don't want him to rapid to Ryloth, especially if I move my Star Destroyer down to Dagobah. So I'm going to move up to Ryloth. I'm going to rule it by fear. And then I'm not going to deploy that Star Destroyer or that Assault Carrier. Okay. I have so far only deployed one capital ship and three have been blown up by Rebel missions. <sighs> Alright, that's okay. Rule by Fear. Cover Ryloth. Make sure he can't wrap it out there. Now Leia might block that, but Leia's probably got other stuff going on. Just because you know where the base is doesn't mean you can afford to abandon checking other places that you don't want them to rapid mobilize to. Um, got Riken and Dodonna on a mission that's most likely rapid and probably drawn for cards, so he was probably a little concerned about if I go to Bespin. You know, one play is, if I had a laser, one play is to fly the Interdictor in, try to take out some Starfighters, then fly the Death Star in after that. Um, that's what I'm debating on doing with Vader here. And I... Oh no, I choose Hunt Them Down with Vader. Yep. Trying to kill some uh, Starfighters here. If I can succeed this, maybe I will... Maybe I'll move in. We'll see how I feel. Okay, Leia decides not to block. Vader rolls a 1, beating Cassian. 
and then I take out a Y wing and an X wing. Could take out the Corvette, they have the cancel card. Having a Corvette is tough if I have an interdictor because if I'm the attacker, he can cancel my cancel card. So, however, again, starfighters blow up the Death Star. So we've just got one single Y-Wing left on, on the board at the moment. So it's not quite secure the plans, but it's close. And then Leia moves out some units from the hidden base to Bespin, trying to protect Gold Leader there. All right. So I'm not feeling confident enough to attack. I feel like the Rebels have too many cards. They have the cancel card in hand. I feel like I'm asking for trouble if I fly in there with the Death Star. So I need to decide where to go to. What's the Utapau fleet gonna do? What's my Guido gonna do? And where do I, where do I consolidate? So after a long thought, which I edited out, Piet decides to go to Celeste. And then I'll bring everything except leaving a trooper in uh, Mustafar. And then also bring everything except a tank from Malastair. Now I have a sizable army in Celeste. I can compete with the army in Bespin. Um, ground army is probably not up to snuff yet, but the navies I can deal with. I can deal with a single white wing with that navy. Okay, rapid mode. Now, where can the rebels rapid to? So they can rapid to. Um, they can rapid to Yavin. They can rapid to Ilum. They can rapid to Dathomir, Dantooine. So I got to get that assault carrier off of. Uh, Coruscant, but I have to leave the ATAT -AT there because I don't want to get caught with a, you know, with a weird hidden fleet um, hit and run sort of combo there. So I leave the ATAT -AT behind, and then I move um, my assault carrier to Felucia and my assault carrier to Alderaan, trying to get that side of the board moving a little bit better. We got our third Moncal on the board. You've noticed um, Jim hasn't deployed any of his Moncals yet, even though he had the opportunity to. I feel like he's waiting for the right base to rapid to, where he can then move his Moncals out. All right, he's got um, rapids to choose from. So let's see where he can go. Assuming he's on Hoth, he cannot. He can go to Endor, but if he's on Endor, he cannot go to Hoth because Hoth is blockaded. Um, but I don't, I don't know which one he's on. So assuming he's on, I know he's on one of those two. He can go to either of these four locations, Yavin, Dathomir, Mandalore, Ilum. And unfortunately, I don't have as good of coverage as I wanted on there. Okay, he is on Endor, which means he's also not on Hoth, which I can cover up because I have TIE Fighters there. Although I don't realize that right away. I think I realize it here shortly. Um, he can also be in Bespin. That's another thing that I didn't mark off correctly here because he liberated that not too long ago. So he could have moved the base closer to the Death Star in theory. That would be a brave move. Um, but maybe if he were deploying fighters, which he is this turn, he could move the base to Bespin, deploy an X-Wing, and then have a brave brave attack i don't know about that because i've got a a shield bunker that i'm deploying so i i don't think bespin is where he moved to otherwise just move bespin back into the hidden base and call it good all right i still got to protect this death star even if i don't think it's by the base anymore though so i got to get the shield bunker under it buy me some time and if you paid attention to the top of the screen, he plopped his two Moncals in the new hidden base. So we'll go ahead and defend the Death Star with a bunker. And then um, see what else I decide to do with these troops. Put a TIE Fighter there by the Death Star as well. I think I actually need ground troops there, but it's all right. 
Just need to make sure I don't lose two points if I can avoid it. Um, with the Assault Carrier up in Felucia, I'll give it some ground support. I'll do the same in Alderaan. Um, drop a couple more in Coruscant, and then one back on the queue. Okay, Rebels have Chirrut and Leia back. And uh, they also played Rebel Planning in the base this turn, which means the Mon Cals are not planning on attacking out. So if they are in Ilum or... Dathomir, they are not planning to attack that single Star Destroyer. If they're in Yavin, I can find out pretty quick because that Assault Carrier can now fly directly in. So there's two general strategies I could employ here. If I had the Ilum card and I knew for a fact he wasn't in Ilum, I think what I would do is move everything to Mandalore. I'd move the Assault Carriers and the Star Destroyer and all the units to Mandalore. However, because I don't know about Ilum, I can't really afford to do that. So, uh, Rebel's opening move is to attack Hoth, interestingly enough, and move everything to Hoth. That definitely means he's not in Bespin, but it does mean he can rapid to Hoth later. So, I don't love that. Um, we'll see if I can kill some Starfighters here. So he does three damage, two to one, one to one. I heal, and he does not heal. So I have one X-Wing down with the TIE Fighter card. And I'll play a play no heal card here. He'll kill me, I'll kill one of him. I got that second X-Wing, we're down to one single Y-Wing left again. Those Rebel Starfighters are getting thin here. Okay, Tarkin to Yavin, see if I can find this base. And survey says it is not the base. So now I have to decide what to do. Do I check Ilum and then corner my Star Destroyer in a non-useful place? Or do I move everything to Mandalore and prepare an assault on Dathomir? Well, I decide to check Ilum with the Emperor because I've got the, 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 according to my design, starting card. So I'll go ahead and move everything to Ilum. It's not in Ilum. Okay, that means literally Bespin or Dathomir. Okay, we've got a Rapid and a Infiltrate that goes off. All those objectives back there. Keep in mind he already scored Liberation once. Oh, kind of a mediocre mission selection here, I feel like. All right, Piet's going to head up to Mandalore just with one single assault carrier. Now, I have some assault carriers to deploy, and he cannot attack out of the base because he rebel planned and then rapided. Mothma is going to do an Incite Rebellion in Kashyyyk. Okay. We are not on a build turn, but that does mean he can deploy in Kashyyyk if he has anything worth deploying there. Troops mostly. Okay, that did not go well for me. Scored Liberation. So now we've scored Liberation twice. Go ahead and copy it there. Five more objectives. or turns. Okay. Now, Krennic is going to move this Star Destroyer to Naboo. I'm trying to get that a little more centralized to protect against plant false leads, is what my thought process is here. Um, and I'm debating on whether or not to move my other fleet down to Bespin or not. I think that would have been the better move, to leave the Death Star but move the fleet down to Bespin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and build alliance up in Bothawi. I'm trying to hedge against um, support of the huts at this point, because Akbar could be on build alliance. And we're going to do a sabotage with Jin and Leia in Mandalore. I'm going to try to block that with Vader. So I'll have four. I'll be rolling against uh, 2.1, 3.1, something like that. 2.1.
I'm wishing I had put a second hero on um, interdictor and not put tag on um, address delays. Having an interdictor to build here would be a really nice thing, but I overthought what I was doing. Okay, Rebels rolled two, Vader rolled three, Sabotage is blocked. Go ahead and put a address to layout, and I pick Utapau, which ends up being a mistake. It really should have been Ord, um, or even just maybe a shield bunker, I'm not sure. But I don't have any assault carriers to build, but I already picked it, so I went ahead and just built the one. And then Akbar is going to be on a build alliance here, and he can take pretty much whatever he wants. And he thinks about this for a little bit, so whether or not he's playing for loyalty objectives or positioning. And he ends up going with building an alliance in my Guido to flip that from loyal to subjugated. Um, I don't know what objectives he has. I assume he's got support of the huts, probably some other ones, but um, at this point the base is pretty vulnerable. Again, really wished I had two... Um, two leaders on that so I could be deploying an interdictor with that assault carrier and a second assault carrier but not to not to be not to not to happen this turn I guess all right they're debating on rapid now here's the problem because I didn't because I blocked a sabotage and didn't move to Bespin if I do not find the base and reveal it this turn coming up all these units can go back to the base. Well, not all, but a lot of those units can go back to the base. And my main fleet is a little bit far away from the base right now. One, two, three, four moves. And I, he's got a lot of objectives that are going to start scoring here. So while it looks like there's lots of game left to be played, I think this is actually a one-turn game at this point. Um... Dathomir was a good spot, and that move to Ilum ended up being ill-fated. So he does not move, meaning he didn't move to Hoth, he didn't move to Bespin. Um, and he's staying on Dathomir. I drew Ilum and Kashyyyk now. I, I didn't go to Kashyyyk either, which he liberated last turn. Okay, what useful missions do I have here? I have Draw Them Out. I have maybe R&D, maybe um, gather intel in case he pulls a plant false leads and I need to grab it back. I'm not really sure. I do have three assault carriers. I am missing a set because of demolition. Um, yeah, that, that demo and that rogue squadron raid are pretty brutal. So a speeder and a troop in base, because he didn't have any starfighters to deploy. I'll drop two assault carriers in Mandalore, one assault carrier in Mygido, um, and then a shield bunker in Yavin. Now I probably should be putting a fighter in Mygido instead of a stormtrooper. But I need to make sure that if he, so if he, what could happen here? Most likely he attacks either Mygido or Mandalore. I'm assuming the right pick is to attack Mandalore because if you have a good battle, you wipe my three assault carriers, retreat, and then I have two assault carriers against two Mon Cal's. Um... If that happens, I also may... that Anyway, I have the at, -AT there already. That probably cancels out the, the, the fighter, but I just, I just sort of felt like I needed an extra ground presence there. I think the smarter move would have been to put a TIE fighter in, or a TIE striker in my Guido. I can also try to time things with you, uh, comboing tag and according to my design... I'd love to get cards back and be totally refreshed for this for this next battle round up here. So right now I'm just kind of thinking what do I have that can actually be useful for my other heroes? Maybe roll by fear, maybe draw them out, maybe subversion, maybe R&D, maybe gather intel. 
Um, Akbar is back, which means most likely those Moncals are coming out first turn. Now, I'm going to bring you back to my first hero choice of Piet, um, ready for action or no retreat. Imagine if I had picked no retreat. If he comes out wherever he comes out of with the Moncals, I just drop Piet with no retreat and the game's over uh, because my other groups can come out. Because I picked ready for action, I have to win the fight or at least take out one Moncal to have a chance. So Akbar's coming out to Mandalore. I've got three assault carriers. Now, they look a lot bigger, but I'm rolling three black, three red. He's rolling two black and four red. Um, he's going to have his Mon Cal cards, and I need to decide whether or not to play ready for action with Piet or just play ready or just play Piet or play according to my design. But I think I need according to my design for the counterattack here. So I'm just going to play Piet's ready for action. Hope he retreats, gets get my guys back. Um, I'm going to open with Overwhelming Presence to counter the Moncal tactics cards, and then he flips the combat, so I am now the attacker. Piet, okay. I'm not re-rolling the reds because I'm just hoping to get another hit with the red. Um, both those reds are blocked. I do one damage. Akbar not rolling real great. One hit so far, but I block it. Three hits total, so I block two of those, and he does one damage to one assault carrier. So now I've got five hit points left to seven hit points. Not so good, but the Mon Cal card is gone. He can't afford to retreat, and I have no card next turn with Entrapment. Again, I would have loved to have an uh, Interdictor there instead, but I make bad life decisions. He plays no heal. I'm the attacker again, and thankfully I have a nice, a nice roll here. If I can get a crit... Nope. Okay, three hits. Max damage on a Mon Cal. I really need to take one of these out here. No heal. All right, one hit. I need no heal here. He can kill as many as he wants. Nope, he's got a heal. Okay, he's killed an assault carrier. I've killed nothing. Okay, he can now retreat again, but then he's going to be four on two. Um, or he can choose to stay and risk losing that last Mon Cal. He's not playing a card this turn, and I have all my cards back. So I play no heal. He should not be playing a card this turn. Um... But I guess that's revenge for me doing that when it wasn't supposed to happen. So, all right. Um, I play no heal. I got two hits and heal. So the heal kind of offsets the ion cannon. So I guess it didn't end up mattering in the grand scheme of things. All right. Two, three. Just goes to show you, man, we play this game all the time and we still make mistakes. So it's hard to, hard to keep track of everything, even with everybody watching. All right. He did enough damage to leave me one assault carrier with one damage on it. Um, and he's got a Mon Cal with a damage on it. I can't retreat, so he stays. And then the right card. To, so now I got to think about not necessarily how to kill this Mon Cal because it's not happening. But I got to think about what cards do I want in the follow-up battle, which is going to be two assault carriers versus a Mon Cal with no Mon Cal card, unless he stays through and tries to cycle his cards. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of reinforcements. I think this was actually a, well, I don't know if that's a bad play or not. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Okay, I need Yahtzee. I need three hits. I got three hits. I need one crit here and then I win. No. Okay, two damage. He's taken out the... Yep, two hits. Okay, my guys are dead. His Mon Cal retreats. Piet comes back to my hands. Now, I if, he play, if I don't attack the base now, and he plays a hit and run, the, the game's probably pretty close to over. 
He rapids all those things back to the base. I can't stop that. He's going to deploy another Mon Cal into the base. Um, I maybe get one Star Destroyer next to my Guido. So I'm running all these scenarios in my head. And there's actually a really long pause here, like a 10-minute pause almost. Um, he tells me he's got the cancel card left in his hand, which only is good for um, making sure I don't get a second card to play. So I basically have to take that Mon Cal out on the first turn. I've got a damage card to do it. I've got the Emperor. I've got according to my design. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So we're going to fly in with the ATAT, -AT, the troops. And again, I have an extra Stormtrooper on the ground when I could have had an extra TIE Fighter in hand. If I had the extra TIE Fighter, I would be playing the two TIE Fighter damage card. Um, instead, I will be playing a one damage card. But had I deployed that TIE Fighter and thought through this a little bit better, I'd be put, putting two damage on the Mon Cal now. Instead, just putting one. One hit. And one existing damage. Okay, two hits. So I would have a, a destroyed Mon Cal at this point who needs to roll a heal. But instead, like I said, I make bad life decisions. Okay, he rolls for the heal and misses. So the game could have been over right now, but it's still pretty close to being over. All right, I'm going to blow up the, um, the Vanguard so he doesn't roll any dice this turn um, because of according to my design. And then he's going to wipe the the ATAT, -AT, but I'll roll for heal and roll for two damage mm, to heal. Yeah, I'll go ahead and heal the ATAT, -AT, I think. Oh, no, maybe I'll re-roll for damage. No, I'll heal the ATAT. -AT. Then I'll roll two others to see if I can get a damage on that speeder, maybe. One. One on the speeder. Okay, ground's pretty much done. Didn't need that extra Stormtrooper. Did need an extra TIE Fighter. That's okay, though. Rolling um, two and two, plus I have a damage card here. I could also block hits, but I believe the key here is to do damage, because he's going to be blocking hits with... Oh, I can't, because I can't play a card. Okay. One blocked. So one heal, and I'm going to roll for crits. One crit. One crit. Okay, he needs a heal. He's got two damage, but he's going to reroll both the red for a heal. And he gets it. Oh, Yahtzee. Okay, he takes out one assault carrier and heals. He now has a three damaged Mon Cal. No more hits to block. And uh, we got to finish ground combat here, too. I'll add a damage. I just need one hit to seal the deal here. Got it. Okay. And then um, he rolls his damage and wipes the ATAT. -AT. Or maybe the troops, I don't remember exactly which. All right. Yep, a troop and an ATAT. -AT. All right. So now back to the assault carrier. I have an extra damage card. Go ahead and play it. Up to four damage. He doesn't have a useful card to play at the moment. Seems good. To, good for me. Okay. Max max hits on the on the assault carrier or on the. Okay. Plus one. Okay, he needs two heals now to, to survive. Two heals and a crit. Ugh. And that is game, ladies and gentlemen. Salt Carrier's got one hit left on it. A few guys uh, left on top of the base. You know, the consideration is, was the right move to go to Hoth and then force that giant Imperial army onto Bespin? I don't know. Maybe he draws plant false leads at a later later point. Um, 
Not too sure. We did a good job of blocking off objectives this turn, gave us enough time to find the base. And uh, the finals, so Dolphin defeated Chalky in the other semifinal game. I'm hoping to get that up too. I don't actually have the raw camera footage yet, but hoping to get that. And then um, I'll post the game between Dolphin and I once we get it scheduled. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, see you guys next week.